Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn to read and write Hindi. We are also here because we are learning to read and write Urdu. We are doing both at the same time. Today is our lesson number 27. Yesterday on day number 26 we started a new topic, a topic called, a concept called Hamza. If you have not watched yesterday's video, day number 26, if you are coming here straight, go back and watch number, day number 26 first because I went into much more detail yesterday and I'm not, there is no point in repeating everything in detail uh, because I'm going to do today. We're going to do it today obviously and we're going to do it again tomorrow on day number 28. And in order for you to under, fully understand the concept, I recommend that you stop right now, watch yesterday's video, day number 26. In day number 26, there is a recapitulation. We learn that Hamza, Hamza is used, Hamza is a letter in the Urdu alphabet. Hamza is a letter in the Urdu alphabet. It happens to be the third last letter. Third last letter we have, we have Hamza. It looks like this, Hamza. Then Chotiye and then Bariye. That's how the alphabet ends. It's the very th third last letter in the al Urdu alphabet. Hamza is used where the spelling of the word is such that Alif is followed by one of these three scenarios where Alif is followed by a wow. We did that yesterday. That's the concept we did yesterday. So here we have Alif that is followed by a wow. And that makes an O sound. And we did a whole bunch of words yesterday which had O sound in it. But instead of writing it like this, we take the wow and we put a Hamza on it. That's all. That's all there is. That's all you have to understand it. And that's the use of Hamza. No, you, no word in Urdu language, no word, there exists no word in Urdu language that begins or ends with Hamza. Hamza always appears like this in the middle of the spelling. Today we'll do the second case where Hamza is used. Where Hamza is used when Alif is followed, when Alif is followed by Chotiye. Chotiye looks like this. Alif is followed by Chotiye. That's what we will do today. And tomorrow we will do a situation where Alif is going to be followed by Bariye. That's for tomorrow. Let's begin. Let's begin. Alif is followed by Chotiye. Alif and a Chotiye. When we were learning Iki Matra, when we were learning Iki Matra and we spent four days on the concept of Iki Matra, we learned at that time that any letter, for example, Urdu letter B, if you combine it with Chotiye, Chotiye gives us Badi Iki Matra. It gives us Badi Iki Matra. So here's our B, and when you have, when it combines with Chotiye, it becomes a B. And how do we write it? We write it like this. We take our B, and we continue with Chotiye, B. Similarly, Similarly, if you had a letter P and you put a Choti here, it gives us P becomes P, Badi Iki Matra. How do we write it? We take our P, very small, continue the Choti here, there is your P, and it becomes a P. What about Alif? Alif, we do not write it like this. Alif, first of all, cannot join, Alif, first of all, cannot join Choti here, because cho it's just not going to join, it's, there is no way. That's probably why we have it. So instead of leaving it like instead of leaving it like a leaf in a choti here, which is very awkward, this is what we do. We write our we make a small loop on the top, then we write our choti here, and we stick a hamza in it. And that gives us badi iki. Badi badi. That's it. That's our badi. That's what we have to understand. And that thing that you see there has an alif buried in it. That's the alif. It's that hamza replaces alif. But for be and pay and dal, everything else is fine. If you had a dal plus chotiye, even though dal does not join anything to its left, and even though it just sits by itself, it's okay. That's okay. We do not we did not make an exception for D, it's only the alif. Alif looks like this. It's the exact same concept that you have in Hindi. There is no difference. It's the exact same concept 
that you have in Hindi and I will convince you of that. And I will convince you of that in a second. Let's erase all of this thing. I will convince you of that in, a, in, about two, in about a minute. When I was about to learn Hindi, when I was beginning to learn Hindi, to read and write, I was told that you write B, if you want a B, you take your B and you go like this. If you want to write P, you take your P and you go like this. So naturally I assume that if you wanted to write E, you will typically take your O and you will go like that. That's what I assume. It has to follow the pattern. But the first letter does not follow the pattern. First letter does not follow the pattern. Get it? It's an exception. You don't write E like that. You have to write it like this. We don't, we don't write it like that. You have to write it like this. That's all it is. That's all that is. So now we're going to work on a whole bunch of words which will require the use of buddy E. This, this, this letter right here. Let's begin. Yesterday's videos was only about 20 minutes, I think 23 minutes long. I'm warning you that you will require, you will have to have patience today because it's going to be a very long video because what happened was I collected a whole bunch of examples and I really didn't want to throw away any of them. I didn't want to make my list shorter. So I kept the entire list and it goes on. It is, yesterday we only did 10 words. Today I have 20 words. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a long time. Let's begin. Let's begin. Now just like yesterday, the first four or five words that we're going to write, they are very straightforward, very simple, and then after, after that, the, the words are going to become a little bit more complicated. So just like yesterday, when we did wa, alif and wa, we came to wo, and the very first word we learned was ao, ao, that's exactly what we're going to do today. Instead of ao, we're going to have a, and then Alif and Choti, I, I, as in she came, I, you're not going to say I for a, for a boy, Aya, Wo Aya, Wo Ai, because it's feminine, I, that's, that, that's what that is, I, how does it look? It looks like this, uh -huh. and then you put a small loop, continue to Choti, and you put a Hamza, there we go, we just wrote our very first word, with thumbs up, which of course I'm lying because if you watch yesterday's video, I said the exact bloody thing yesterday because I like to lie through my teeth. Here is here's another one. No, yeah, you guessed it, you guessed, you guessed it. What's coming up? Nay, nay, no, but this is tricky. This is no, and then you're gonna do like this, like that. So we don't make another loop, we don't do no and then another one for it and that, that, that's going to look even uglier. I suppose you could if you wanted to, that's okay, nay. And this one is fine too. Instead of making, instead of making a special loop for Hamza like I did here, I put a straight line like this. And that's perfectly fine also. The reader will immediately understand what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to write. Nay, nay as a new. Let's do one more. Let's see if you're clever enough to figure out what I'm about, what word I'm going to write. Ga, go. I bet you can't figure out what the word is going to be. Gai. I'm being silly. Gai. But as you can see, they all follow in E. So here's our ga, and then another loop for Hamza. Gai. Follow. Let's do one more. Let's try another word, shall we? Let's try another word. Instead of two of these, we're going to get rid of one. And now go becomes a ko. Now the go becomes a ko. It's a new word. Kai. Do you know what kai means? Kai means various, many. Kai logo se baat hui meri. I spoke to many people. Kai logo, kai logo ne mujhe mashwara diya. Many people gave me advice. Kai log the maape. There were various people. There were many people. Kai, kai and gai. Let's do one more. 
here is bay and do chashmi here this do chashmi here is right here we spend five full days on the concept of do chashmi here day number 21 through 25 day number 21 22 23 24 and 25 we spend five days because there are 10 letters in hindi alphabets that do not exist in urdu and they require the use use of the uh, use of Chashmi here. For example, we, we can produce, a Urdu speaker most certainly can produce the sound of B, just like an English speaker can, but we don't have a letter for B. So that's how we do it, just like you would do in English. You would take your B and H to make a B. So that's a B, to which we're going to add Aki Matra. Guess what word we're we going to write all together. So here's our B. And what do you suppose comes next? You're right. Bai. Bai is in brother. So that's Ba and then E. Bai. Let's put them together. So this is our B. It continues with the Tuchashmi He. It continues with Aleph. Ba. Bai. Brother. Let's do one more. Let's do one more, shall we? Lam, that's a la. So now they're getting a little bit more complicated, the words. La, and then a mean, that's a ma. Lam, and the next one when I write, you can figure out exactly what word we're about to write. And then a ba, that's a ba. And then the last one, e. Lambai. Do you know what Lambai means? Lambai means length. Length of something. Lambai. Let's put it together. Let's put it together on the top. Or we could just do it right here. So, meme, instead of looking like this, going from the top and coming down, it's going to start from the bottom and it's going to look like this, to which the lam is going to join. And then we're going to join the ba and then e. Lambai. Let me do it freehand. Lambai. That's all. Lambai. The length. Now, since we did the length, we have to do the breath. This is the length. Now, let's write a word which means breath, as in B R E A B T H. Breath. Length and breath. What the American English, what the Americans like to call Americans don't call it breath, we call it in the US, we call it width. Because it measures how wide something is. British like to measure how broad things are. Instead of how wide things are, they measure how broad things are. And broad is an adjective. The noun of broad is breadth. Wide is an adjective. The noun of wide is width. I don't know why we're getting into English. That's what we're going to learn right now. So what do you suppose, what do you suppose the antonym of lambai is? You know the, you know the antonym of length? The length, antonym of length is breadth or width. What's the antonym of lambai? Do you know? Here we go. We're going to learn it just now. That's a chur. We don't need a chur. We need an oki matra. So it's going to combine with wa. That's going to make a cho. And then re and alif. Cho ra. And I left no room for myself to finish it. Yes, there is. Yes, there is this thing. I left no room for myself. Cho. Ra. E. Chorai. Chorai means, as I said, the breath. Or with, if you like. Chorai, Lambai Chorai. It's ki Lambai, it's ki Chorai, but it's Kamriki. It's Kamriki Lambai Chorai kya hai. What is the length and the width of this room? You see, I said width, because in the US we say width, we don't say breadth. What's the width and the length and the width of this breadth, uh, of, of this room? What are the dimensions? Instead of asking, instead of saying what are the dimensions of this room, it's uh, what's the length and width? It's ki Lambai Chorai kya hai. Chorai. 
Let's put it together, shall we? So here's our cho, to which we're going to join the wow, that makes the cho. Then re is going to stay by itself because the re never joins anything to the left of it. So that's cho ra and then e. Cho ra e. Cho ra e. Let's put it on the top so we can read right, the next word. Chorai. One more time, a word requiring che. So here's your che. It's going to join aleph, that makes a cha. And then a ro. And then pe and akimata, that makes a pa. And finally, e. And that reads cha ra pa i char pa i char pa i. I hope you have the same word in, in Hindi. Because obviously I know it because we have it in Urdu. A char pa i is a bed. Essentially, it's uh, four pieces of wood you put together with uh, some some sort of a jute or something uh, with rope, and it makes a very rudimentary, very very basic bed, but it's very comfortable. I missed my days in the younger days when I was a little boy sleeping on charpai chhat ke upar on the roof. It's great. Charpai. There we go. Cha ra pa e charpai. There we go. That's how we write charpai. Let's continue. I'm halfway through. Now we go to the next, next word, uh, next page, where I have some more words, and these are a little bit more difficult. Let's raise this thing. Here's the very first one. It's going to start with E. Interestingly enough, it's going to start with E. E, and then Sin, and Alif. That makes a Sa. E, Sa. And it's also going to end with E. And what does it read now? It reads Isai. Do you know what Isai means? Isai is Christian. That's how we say Christian in Urdu. I'm sure it's the same in Hindi. Isai. Now this spelling that you see in Hindi, that's perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with it. But this spelling that I wrote on the blackboard is wrong. Isai does not start with Aleph. We have two us. We have Aleph, which is a a, uh, and then we have another letter called Ain, which is also a. Uh. We learned this long time ago, Ain. Somewhere here is buried here. We learned the Ain right there. Right there. It says approximately a. Uh. Ain and Gain. Gain is approximate G. Ain is approximate a. Uh. That's what it requires here. The first one, not the second one. So we're going to replace Aleph with Ain. That's the first thing we have to do. Now, let's carry on. Now what happens is that when ain, ain is about to join something, when Ain is about to join something, it changes the shape. It looks like this. Almost like Hamza. Watch, watch the difference. Watch my hands. Like that. But Hamza is straight. You see the difference? That's Hamza, that's Ain. To which we're going to join Choti Ye. Where the Choti Ye, Obar Ye, when it appears in the middle of the word, it takes this shape. E. And then C in takes this shape, it's going to join the Aleph. And then Aleph and Choti Ye are going to become E. That's what we have to combine. That's what we are up against. Let's do that, shall we? So here's Ain, Ye, two for the C, one for the Aleph one more time. So that's E. So far this part is E. And then this is C. We make one more loop for the Aleph. That's E, Sa, E. Isai, that's how you write it. That's how you write Christian in Urdu. And that's how you write Christian in Hindi. Assuming that is the word that you use in Hindi. I'm fairly sure you, you use the same word, Isai. Let's do one more, shall we? Let me write this at the top so we have the room. Isai. 
Now we could have written isai, isai like this also. E and then like that. Oh, my hand kind of slipped. Here is your E and then Sa. This is perfectly fine too, that's a Sa. Instead of making, instead of making two loop for the scene and one more for the Aleph, you just continue with the one big one. It saves time. That's for the lazy people. But it's perfectly acceptable. Isai. Let's do the next one. The next one is going to start with the letter. It's going to start with the letter Fe. This letter is called Fe. This does not exist in Urdu. Uh, this, this, this letter does not exist in Hindi. This letter is letter F. The letter that does exist in Hindi is this letter. P and the Duchishmi He makes a F. And that does exist in Hindi. That's this letter right here. So Hindi has this letter which, me, which is actually P and H. F. That one does not exist. F does not exist in Hindi. So when we want to, when we want to indicate that we are writing something which requires fe and not te and he, we write our fe, your Hindi fe, and we put a little dot there to remind ourselves that we are dealing with this fellow, that we are dealing with this fellow, fe. That's what we need right now in the word that we are about to write. Fe. So there's your fur. We put a dot there to remind ourselves that we're talking about this fur and not pH. We're looking about this spelling of this word starts with letter F, not pH. Fur. R. Ma. Oh, this is an interesting one. And now it's an E right here. But it's not finished yet. And the show. For Maish. For Maish. Let me rewrite this part here. So that's a show. For Ma Ish. For Maish. Now I don't know how to go about explaining for Maish the meaning. For Maish is when you ask something to someone uh, to do something for you. Or rather the person person is asking other person if, if there is something I can do for you. For my yeah for my shapki, what would you like? Or when you go to a cultural event like a council or something, the artist will ask you, Aapki kya for Maisha? What would you like to sing? What what would you like me to sing? Not what you what would you like to sing, but rather, what would you like me to sing? What would you like me to play? Aapki kya for Maisha? That's for my age. That's how it is. Let's put them together. Oh. This is for, r, for, ma, ah, and here's the tricky part. Now this alif and choti ye, alif and choti ye, instead of looking like this, instead of looking like this, which you has been so far, which it has been so far, so very carefully, when it appears in the middle of the word, when he appears in the middle of the word, it does not, Chotiye does not appear. All you see is this loop and this. Because it's in the middle. We just drop the Chotiye because it's too inconvenient. It just doesn't, there you go, from, from Maish. That's how it looks like. From Maish. I'm going to rewrite from Maish one more time. For Ma. You can write it like this too. You see the difference? I did not make two loops. I just went straight one like this. And the dots are sloppy. You don't see the three, you don't see the three individual dots. But that's how it's usually going to appear when people are writing freehand for Maish. Let's do one more. Next one we're going to write will require Eki Matra. So here we go. So it starts with the P, so the Sarpa is going to join the Bariye, so that makes that, that gives us Choti Eki Matra, so it becomes P, then we have a Dal, that's a D, Dal is going to take Aleph, that's a Aki Matra, 
then we have an E, and then finally we have a show. What does it read? It reads Pedaish. Pedaish as in birth. Kis jagab ki pedaish hui thi? Where were you born? Do you understand? Pedaish. Pedaish means birth. Let's put them together. So whenever I'm repeating the same thing over and over again, whenever choti ye or badi when it appears in the middle, it takes this shape. So here's your pa, ye, to which we join dal, and dal does not join the other. So far it's going to stay like this. So that, so far it reads peda, and this guy, because it appears in the middle, it just takes this shape. And then sheen. Pedaish. Now let me let me rewrite the same word, freehand. One. That's another one right here. It's the same exact thing. Same exact word. Pedaish. You see how the dots came out here for three here? But the person can tell when you do like this, there's three dots, then is this is two dots. Three dots, two dots. Three dots, two dots. Pedaish. Birth. Let's do one more. Let's rewrite this one on top here so we can have the room. Pedaish. Then we have seen so and then we have a fe and alif that's going to make a fa fo and alif again we put a dot to remind ourselves we're talking about f and not ph safa so and an e safai so safai so means cleanliness Cleanliness, clean, cleanness. Safai is a noun. Adjective is saf. If something is saf, it's clean. Saf, adjective, the noun, safai. Just like clean, adjective, something is clean, adjective. Cleanliness is a noun, safai. There we go. Again, one more time. As you see, the spelling that you see of safai in Hindi is perfectly fine, but the spelling of Safai, as you see in Urdu, is not correct. We have two sa in Urdu. We have this, which is exactly equal to sa, and then we have something called swag. I'm sure we learned it some time ago, swag. I don't know which day we learned it. I see swag. There is the swag right here on day number six, swag right there. And you can see the approximate sign here, right here. This is how it goes. Oh, it's not equal to, it's approximately equal to. So, approximately because it does not exist in Hindi. So Hindi does not make a distinction between seen and swat. Hindi makes no distinction between the two, which is why this spelling is correct. We wrote down so. But that is not correct. Safai is spelled with a swat. And now the question is, how the bloody hell is the writer supposed to know whether it takes a scene or a swat, to which I have given you answer many, many times. And the answer is, the writer simply has to know. One has to know the spelling of the words that one is about to write, just like in English. English language, one has to know the spelling. Writer has to know which which sir it calls for, which er it calls for, which ger it calls for, which her is called for. We have four her. The writer has to know which her to use for it to be a proper spelling. The writer has to know which zer to use. There are four zes in Urdu. And the writer must know the correct spelling of the word requires calls for which the but you don't have any of the answers in Hindi you just use the the and you go your merry way very simple let's put them together so fine so when, it, when it's about to join something it's going to take this shape like that the second loop is for something that's about to join like that so fine so fine voila that's how it looks like so fine. Let's do the next one.
with this Safari. Let's do something that would qualify as, as this uh, sort of a remote antenna. Not quite antenna, but remote. Burr. We don't want a burr, we want a uki matra. We want a choti uki matra. Choti uki matra means we need a perish. Same symbol in Hindi except it goes in the bottom. It, the burr becomes boo. Boo. And then a ra. We don't want a ra, we want a ra. Boo, ra. Yep, you guessed it. Brai. Brai. Let's put them together. Brai isn't something bad. Bu. Ra. Brai. That's how you write it. Brai. Let's do one more. Ah. And then E. And then an A. What does it read? Ah, E, Na. Aina. Aina is in mirror. Aina. So again, because this thing is appearing in the middle, because it is appearing in the middle, it will not take this shape, it will just take this shape. And then and now. Now here we have to make a, here we have to pause one more time. It's one of the idiosyncrasies, one of the eccentricities, one of the oddities of Urdu language that sometimes, sometimes some words, even though they end with the Aki Matra. Even though they end with the Aki Matra, for some strange and inexplicable reason, they take a her. And it looks like this. That part that you see there, that's supposed to be a her, one of these her. Right here, this one. But it takes that shape. And that's how it is. So you'll write Aina like this. All you have to do is put them together. And these two are going to put together. That's all. A is going to stay by itself. A. That's how you write mirror. Aina. Aina. I'm going to redo it because I don't like the way it came out. There we go. Aina. Mirror. Let's do one more. Kaf. That's a curve. Yes, I know it's, it's taking a long time, but as I told you, this was going to be a long one, and I have three more. Just after this one, I have three, st still three more words. Ko. Oh, we don't need a curve, we need a oki matra. Ko. So it's going to join a vowel that makes a ko. And then an e. And then a la. Koila. Let's do it on the top. We need the room. You know what a coil is? Coil is a piece of coal. Coal. Coil. Let's put them together. Calf and a wow is straightforward. Calf and a wow. That's a coal. And this one, because it appears in the middle, it's just going to take this shape. So it takes this shape and then the alarm continues. Koila. Except this spelling is also wrong. As I said one more time, I'm going to say it one more time as I just said a little while ago, that every language has its oddities, eccentricities, idiosyncrasies. And one of the idiosyncrasies of Urdu language is that every once in a while you come across words which even though they end with Aki Matra, but for some strange reason, they take a He. It's not going to look like this. It doesn't take an Alif. It does not take an Alif. This lam continues and then takes a hey. Let me rewrite it so it looks better. Koila. That's how it should look like. Koila. And this last, last bit here is a her. Ko, e, la. Koila.
Oh, next one is a yummy one. You will like that one. Yum, yum. Give me some. There's a meme. Mo. We don't want mo. We want a me. We want a choti ki matra. Me. See if you can guess what we are writing. Me. By the next one you will know. And that's a te. Te is going to join with he to make it th. To make it th. That makes that's how we write th. Me. And it's going to join the other. Mitha. Of course by now you know it. Mithai. So all of that is ta. Tha. All of that is ta, and then we have an e. So this alif belongs to the ta part. That's that's this part. This is all of this is, all of that that you see there is is this. Ta. Let's put them together. Meme goes like this, and then ta looks like this. Alif joints, and then this is this is this guy. Oh, it's at the end. So it's going to just going to be. I thought it was in the middle. Mithai. There you go. So, this alif that you see there, this alif that you see there, is this guy right here. And this alif that you see here, this alif that you see here, is this guy right here. That's all. Mithai. Let's rewrite it up on the top. Me, ta, mitai. As I said, you will like it. Yum yum. Give me some. Let's do the next one. Kaf. I say ka. We don't want a ka. We want a ka. So that makes a ka. And then an e. Ka e. Then a na, and then a te. What does it read? It reads kainat. Kainat is very much an Arabic word. A, a Hindi speaker I doubt very highly if you would know it. Kainat. Kainat means universe. Let's put them together. Kaf, as you know, when it's about to join something, it looks like this. To which alif is going to join. So let me start again. Because when you're doing bits and pieces, it comes out ugly. Ka. And then because this guy is appearing in the middle, it's just going to take this shape. Ka, e, na, ta. There you go, voila. That looks very nice. Even though I say so myself. Kainat, universe. The very last one. The very last one, we are done. This word that we're about to write is going to start with letter V. And that's vowel. So here, the letter vowel is not being used as any matra. As you know, letter vowel is used to make a oki matra, choti oki matra, badi oki matra. They both require letter vowel. It also used, letter vowel appears also, letter vowel is also used to in, the, in, the, in making of badi oki matra. But here, it is not a badi it's not a choti o, it's not a badi o, because it begins with it, there is nothing in front of it, it's just a letter by itself, like this, wa. We don't need a wa, we need a aki matra, wa. Wa, you mean to connect them like that, because wa does not connect, that looks very silly. To an eyes of an Urdu speaker, that looks damn silly. Wa, that's a wa, aki matra, and then we need a e. And then a lamb. Can you guess how we're going to finish it? Violin. 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 You know what a violin is, obviously. I need the room. We need to erase this thing. We have no choice. Here we go. Wa. And because this is appearing in the middle, it's just going to take this shape. 
and it's going to join the lamb. So it's, it's going to take this shape, it's going to join the lamb, and the lamb is going to join the noon. But I have to rewrite it because it came out horribly. First of all, everything has to be closer together to wa. Here we go. Wa, a, I should be paused there. Wa, violin. That's how you write it. Violin. So those were some example of letters, uh, of words rather, some example of the words which require the use of Hamza because they take Badi E, because Alif follows Choti E. Tomorrow we'll do part 3 where we'll, where we'll see that Alif will follow Badi E, some words, spelling of some words are such that it requires Alif being followed by Badi E, Badi E, and that's a E. Badi E, we just and we talked about in the beginning of the video, Alif being followed by Badi A, Badi Ye rather, it looks like this, but we don't write it like this, we're going to write it like this, and that's an A. And all the words we're going to learn, we're going to do tomorrow, some examples, they will all have A in there, this sound. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? We made it through. Bye now.